tree hoppers are fun little bugs. Grouped with the leafhopper families into a super family of loudest insects in the world. All have short, bristle-like antennae, three-segmented feet, and other similarities in leg form and in wing venation. Treehoppers are distinguished from their closely related families by their large dorsal plate, the shield-like first segment of the thorax, which you could say is something like a neck or shoulders. In treehoppers, the dorsal plate extends backward to cover the abdomen and, in many species, forward to cover the head as well, and are often humped or pointed to resemble a thorn or have spikes or take other odd shapes. Most species are tan, brown, gray, or black, or leaf green, and camouflage colors. The patterns are usually cryptic blotches, though some species have patches or bands of contrasting colors. Some may have tiny raised bumps, hairs, or a jagged texture. Bristly hairs often appear on nymphs, immature life stages, similar species. Many groups of true bugs are hoppers, including spittlebugs, frockhoppers, leafhoppers, and many types of planthoppers. Habitat and Conservation Treehoppers are a diverse, common group, and its members feed on and are found on many different types of plants, so they are found in many types of habitats. Each species is associated with its own types of food plants, and identifying the plant a treehopper is feeding on is usually a key to its identity. Treehoppers augment their camouflage colors and shapes with their behavior. They typically rest motionless in places where one would expect to see a green, gray, or brown thorn or plant wart, such as in the crotches of branches or twigs. When several treehoppers cluster together in a group, their plant thorn camouflage can be especially convincing. Some tree hoppers are attracted to lights at night. Food. Tree hoppers, like other true bugs, have their mouth parts formed into a pointy tube used for drinking fluids. In this case, like aphids, they insert their beak into a plant and drink sap. Different species of tree hoppers feed on different types of plants. But as the name, tree hopper, suggests, woody plants, trees, and shrubs are more commonly the food plants in this group than non-woody plants. Yet the larvae, and some the adults of some species, may feed on non-woody plants. Life cycle. Female tree hoppers insert their eggs into the twigs of trees. The eggs hatch after April and nymphs mature the following fall. As with other true bugs, the immature forms more or less resemble the adults. They are not radically different with separate grub or caterpillar stages. Some species of tree hoppers feed together in groups. In some species, the females guard the eggs and young. Human connections. Although tree hoppers feed on plants like other sap drinking bugs, they rarely cause real trouble for their food plants or the humans who care about the plants. The tree hoppers egg laying process, however, can damage small twigs. Only a few species are considered pests. Meanwhile, Tree hoppers provide food for multitudes of birds and insect eating insects that people consider beneficial. Most plant feeding insects are not devastating pests. Ecosystem connections. As with any of various small insects and several other types of true bugs, many types of tree hoppers have mutually beneficial relationships with ants, which drink the tree hoppers' sugar rich excretions and protect the hoppers from predators in return. Douglas Tallamy has written that a plant that has fed nothing has not done its job. Most birds, he points out, cannot survive and raise their young on plants, but require plentiful insects for food. He reminds us that there must be a wide variety of insects and their various native food plants. In order for there to be birds and other larger animals and a functioning ecosystem, and how is a tree hopper different from a leaf hopper? The leaf hoppers are a large and diverse family of sap sucking, hopping insects. In overall body form, many look a lot like cicadas, only much smaller. You can distinguish them from similar groups of small hoppers by the hind legs, which have one or more rows of small spines on the shins. 
their bodies tend to be parallel-sided or taper toward the rear. The bulbous base of each thin, bristle-like antenna is relatively short compared to that of planthoppers. There are two small, simple eyes atop the head, usually between the two compound eyes. Leafhoppers may possess dull, camouflage colors, or they may be breathtakingly vivid. Many species are gray, brown, tan, black, or various shades of green or osher. But some sport racy striped patterns of robin's egg blue and red, or chartreuse and deep orange, maroon and yellow, chartreuse and baby blue, or black and sky blue. Even the species with relatively drab colorations frequently possess intricately beautiful markings, resembling the swirls of agate or the patterns on moth wings. Some species have bold patches of contrasting colors. Unique among insects, leafhoppers excrete a substance containing microscopically small, wax-like granules called brachiosomes. Using the comb-like rows of spines on their hind legs, leafhoppers rub this material over their bodies. Scientists call this behavior anointing. Functionally, it is about the same as waxing a car. It protects the outer cuticle of the insect from water and from the sugary excretions from fellow sap-drinking insects. Females of several leafhopper species wipe and clump the brachiosomes into an oval patch or a line about midway along each wing. They use this white material in the egg-laying process. So be advised that a white patch or line on the side of a leafhopper may not be useful for species identification, since it's not actually a body color. Because they are a very large and diverse group, leafhoppers may best be identified by determining that they are not treehoppers, planthoppers, or froghoppers. Spittlebugs and froghoppers are a lot like leafhoppers, but have only one or two stout spines on the shins, plus a small ring of spines at the outer tip of that leg segment. Many species bodies are widest at the hind end, a little like a resting frog, hence the name froghopper. Larvae leave in bubble shelters on plant stems. Planthoppers often have angled or pointed heads. The antennae are attached below the eyes, on the sides of the head. The two basal segments of each antenna are thick or bulbous, comparatively large beneath the outer segment that is a thin bristle. The wings may be large, or they may be barely long enough to cover the first few segments of the abdomen. Tree hoppers have an enlarged pronotum, shield-like part just behind the head, that extends backward to cover the abdomen. Often it is shaped to resemble a thorn or twig bark wart. Habitat and conservation. Leafhoppers may be found nearly anywhere because they live wherever plants grow. Many species are associated with only certain types of plants, while others may eat a wide variety of plants. Food. Like other hoppers, leafhoppers have their mouthparts arranged into a tube, which they insert into a plant leaf or stem and then use to suck plant fluids. Life cycle. Like most other related hoppers, female leafhoppers use a hollow, needle-like structure called an ovipositor to poke a hole into the leaf or stem of a suitable host plant and insert eggs into the living plant tissue. When the eggs hatch, the juvenile leafhoppers eat and grow, molting five times. The final molt renders them winged, sexually mature adults. Females of several leafhopper species rub and pack the brachiosomes into a white patch or line about midway along each wing after inserting their eggs into a plant stem. The female dabs some of this material onto the hole, which prevents the eggs from drying. Some leafhopper species are migratory, moving north in the spring and south in the fall. Ecosystem Connections In 1987, the famous scientist and champion of nature E. O. Wilson gave an address called The Little Things That Run the World. He argued that even though we're more accustomed to caring about birds, fish, and mammals, people need to work to protect invertebrates from extinction. If invertebrates were to disappear, 
I doubt that the human species could last more than a few months. Most of the fishes, amphibians, birds, and mammals would crash to extinction about the same time. Next would go the bulk of the flowering plants, and with them, the forests, and other terrestrial habitats of the world. The biological field of plant-insect interactions is unendingly rich and interesting, covering not only the topics of crop pests, but also the intricate connections between the thousands of insect species whose destinies are bound with their individual host plants. As with aphids, plant hoppers, tree hoppers, and other sap drinkers, the excretions of leaf hoppers are relatively watery and have a high sugar content, and many species have mutually beneficial relationships with ants. The ants receive the sugary fluid called honeydew and complement the hoppers by guarding them from insect predators and parasites. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.